Hey guys, Joel here again for another video about movies about love. I've been recording these when I'm really tired. Maybe it'll make them cozy, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but uh, the next movie I want to talk about is Paris, Texas. And uh, Paris, Texas, all the movies I talk about in this series are like some of my favorites, so it goes without saying. But um, uh, Paris, Texas, one of my favorite movies of all time. Directed by Wim Wenders, I think that's how you say it, spelled like Wem Wenders, but I think he's German, or I might be wrong, but um, it's a movie he did in America, uh, starring Harry Dean Stanton, and uh, it's, it, it's, I saw it first probably like 10 years ago, if not more. I, I, I remember watching it with uh, Carl, who is, uh, was my dad's friend who is like an older intellectual type. So it was interesting to watch it with him. And I think he was kind of bored if I'm not mistaken, but uh, <laughs> uh, he, he was such a cool guy. And um, I watched it on recommendation of the ending because without giving away too much, there's a really beautiful, powerful monologue at the end that, that really contextualizes the entire film. And uh, it's uh, somebody told me about that. I read about it and I'm like, I want to see this. And I was pretty young. I was still in high school. But uh, since then, I've revisited it a number of times. I revisited it before I made my movie 31 Days in Marshall, North Carolina, because uh, it starts very wandering. A guy's in the desert wandering America and his family finds him. And uh, I thought it was a fitting one to watch before we made that movie. But uh, it's, it's such a such a gut punch of a movie but it's like a punch in slow motion because it's so, so well uh so well paced so slowly and carefully paced and uh you, you don't really know what's going on for most of the movie you're you're just following this this lost man who's who's left his family and almost seems to have dementia or something and they bring him back in and he he tries to put his life back together he reconnects with a kid uh his, his kid he had and uh, it, it, it's, it's this incredibly sad, but incredibly hopeful portrait of love as regret. It's, it's like, <laughs> uh, it's like Cher, uh, do you believe in life after love? This movie is life after love. It's like after a guy has lost his love and and wanders and and doesn't know what to do and he feels like his life is behind him now and the hopeful part is it's like maybe it is over for him but maybe he could he could at least give good things to those that he he left behind you know at least leave a positive impact to let other people live and let other people love and uh it's just it's just really sad it's, it's a sad uh sad movie and each time i watch it it hits me more and i think as you grow and you go through love and you go through things that that you, as you get experiences movies just talk to you more and more you know which makes movies so cool because they're ever evolving because i feel like it, in uh in high school i didn't really have the life experience to like connect to this in the same way I do now. But watching it now, uh, it's, it's Sam Shepard wrote it, I believe, who's a famous playwright but, um, and an actor, I believe. But uh, he's, it's uh, such, a, such a roundhouse kick of a movie. It, <laughs> as I said, it's a punch. It's a roundhouse kick in slow motion. And uh, I've watched other Vim Vendors movies, and I haven't liked them as much. I have a Annie Hall complex with some directors and uh, Woody Allen, like I've loved Annie Hall since like middle school. And I, every time I rewatch it, I'm like, yeah, I still love this movie so much. And I one time did a big Woody Allen kick trying to relive Annie Hall. I'm like, does he have anything else that I like this much? And I just couldn't find anything else. Like he has a lot of good movies. He has movies that are even great, but like they're not Annie Hall and like, it's kind of hard when you see your favorite movie by a director first because everything else kind of is that same style but not quite as good. And um, yeah, I feel that way about Vim Vendors a little bit. I've 
watched uh, 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 an Amer the American Friend by him. I watched uh, the one with Bruno Gans. Why do I remember the actor but not the title? It's the, the, the City of Angels one where he's an angel. Uh, God, uh, this series, maybe it's just because I'm sleepy. This is the second time in the series I've just blanked. But um, yeah, yeah, Paris, Texas is the unsurpassable one for me right now. I've, he has so many movies I haven't seen, so I should keep exploring. But uh, Harry Dean Stanton is so amazing in it. Like, that's the movie that, like, converted me to loving him now when i watch like a david lynch movie or something and he shows up i'm like dude it's harry dean standing from paris texas you know i think that's fun when an actor like really hits you in one of their movies and then like you just love them that much more and everything else they're in suddenly you're like looking for them and you when you see them you get excited because you love them so much in this one movie and uh that's this movie paris texas is that movie and uh movies are great i love movies i'm a sad sack sometimes and i like to turn on a sad movie i like to turn on movies that you know feel like a, a hug a truthful hug they feel like a hug that's like like <laughs> i don't even know it's a hug that's like it'll be okay but also for is fucking hard you know it's like it's not it's not just pu pushing it down or saying like it'll be okay it's a little bit of both it's honest and i like movies that are like a truthful hug i guess and paris texas is a big long truthful hug and i strongly recommend it i love you guys one more video in this love series even though i'll probably talk about movies about love forever but uh, uh come one more coming up. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me <laughs> while I'm this sleepy. Bye-bye.